Hello, I'd like to share with you a passage from Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. And there's a couple points that uh, God has brought to my attention in this that I'd like to share with you. Matthew 7, verses 1 through 5. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. It says in verse 1, judge not that you be not judged. There's different kinds of judging. There's judgment we do every day all day long in every situation we judge whether to have that second piece of chocolate cake and uh, we judge whether the used car we're trying to buy at that particular moment from this individual while we're standing in his driveway you're looking at that person and you're making a judgment about the person selling you the used car you're making a judgment about the car you're making a judgment about how much money you're going to spend or not spend so the bible tells us not to judge but we have to judge all the time. That's because there are two different kinds of judgment. All right? There's the judgment that's decision-making based on discernment and understanding. And then there's judgment that the Bible's speaking about here, that Jesus is speaking about here in Matthew 7. It's the judgment that comes with condemnation. Back to the example of the, the used car. I've seen some cars that were sort of a yellowish orange color, something like, uh, looks like something a baby would spit up when he wasn't feeling well. And I can use discernment and proper judgment and say that's an ugly looking car. That color is terrible. But if I was to make a judgment and say, either out loud or in my own mind, anybody who buys a, a car that color has to be stupid or crazy, then that includes condemnation. And that's what Jesus is talking about here in the front end of Matthew chapter 7. So I'm going to go to Luke, and I think Luke chapter 6 has a part on here that it's basically the same verse, but it adds a little something else that helps us understand. Luke 6, 37. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. So Jesus is telling us, don't add the condemnation in with your judgment. You can, you can see somebody, like walking through a park, somebody's clearly drunk out of his mind, staggering around, falling down, screaming at a bush, or something like that. Drug addict, alcoholic, homeless. You can smell him from 50 feet away, and you can make a judgment call, well, there's a homeless, alcoholic, drug addict. And you could be perfectly right. But then what do, you take, what do you do with that thought after that? You take it to the next level. Are you operating in love and you start praying for that person? Do you walk up to that person and say, Hey, uh, would you like to go across the street to Burger King and have lunch? Buy him a, a Whopper and some fries and a Coke? Or do you, do you call the police and say, Well, we got to get this bum out of our park here. He's stinking up the place. So is there condemnation in your judgment? When you're making a judgment call, you're judging things all the time. And Jesus tells us again here in John chapter 7, Judge not, do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. You see, anybody with a mind can make a judgment. You see, you hear, you smell something with your senses. You perceive something or someone, a situation, an event, or a person, whether they're speaking or whether they're just standing there, and you can tell things about them. You can understand some level. But then the righteous judgment is not just of your mind and your will. It comes beyond the soul. It's your spirit. The Holy Spirit will reveal things to you. I remember one time when I was driving down the road in Hawaii and I saw a hitchhiker on the side of the road. A lot of people still hitchhike in Hawaii because it's, it's just one of those cultural things that they still do. 
So this person's hitchhiking and um, he didn't look too comfortable or too savory and, and uh, I thought I better pick that guy up. And I don't think that was me. I think that was the Holy Spirit prompting me. And I ended up driving two hours out of my way and buying him lunch. This person who didn't have his own transportation, I don't know if he was homeless or anything else. But I made a righteous judgment call because the Holy Spirit was involved in that process. You see, that's the key element. That's when you know you're judging with righteous judgment is when the Holy Spirit is involved in the process. If it's just you in the situation or the event or the person that you're looking at, you and your own pea brain trying to figure it out, well, then you're much more likely to add in condemnation. When I first started ministering to people on the street, one of the things I had a real hard time getting past was ministering to someone who smelled bad. I had a real hard time with that. My sense of smell isn't that great, so if, some, if I think somebody's smelling bad, I mean, it's a cloud and I'm already in it. So, uh, and I would make a judgment, you know, it's like, come on, you can, you can go into the petrol station, the soap and the water's free in there, and they got paper towels, you could clean yourself up. And, and I would think this while I'm trying to minister to them, and it was a stumbling block for me. I just wasn't making any progress. And I allowed the Holy Spirit to help me. You judge with righteous judgment that this guy, he doesn't need a shower. He needs Jesus. He needs to be prayed for. He needs to be loved. He needs to be ministered. Jesus said, um, they will know you are my disciples by your love one for another. Judge with righteous judgment so you can express love in ministry to people in Jesus' name. All right? So those are the two things. So judge, you have to, everything all the time. But use righteous judgment. And don't condemn. If you have a thought or something like that, just just tell Jesus, thank you. Thank you for that I'm not in that situation and I have an opportunity to bless that person. And that's what I had to share.